I'll get into a house and I won't know why there's a problem. So I'll just say, hey, there's a huge problem here. And I can look down at the furnace, I can say, hey, I don't like the ductwork here, but even then it's, a lot of it's at the second floor. I can't see how, how exactly it gets there, but they say, hey, it's super cold here. And I'll recommend him because I don't know if I can fix the problem with a new system. And I'd rather fix it right and be happy with it with him going out there and say, hey, look, I did this either a blower door test or an infrared camera, and then there's no insulation in that upstairs bedroom, or maybe it's settled, or you know, whatever it is. It's a huge deal to get it right, to get it fixed. Even, you know, you're not, you're not doing an addition, we're just putting in a replacement system, but my neck's on the line. If I don't fix that room, and if I know that there's a problem there and they point it out, I'll usually just refer them, and then that way it saves me too. Like yeah. If you decide not to do it, that's not my call. So. <clears throat> With a good presentation and what what's in it for them, though, I've, I've had clients turn it down before, or turn some of it down before, but mostly they go with it because if you explain it well and <coughs> know they know what's in it for them, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, and uh, Andy, I really do appreciate that I, uh, all the referrals that you do give me, and, and I refer you too. Exactly. You, you yeah, know that nice. I, I get you in there too, but. <laughs> But yeah, I think what I'd like to stress, uh, so I told Doug, you know, just giving some, if we could just have a little bit more dialogue up front on this project. And then again, with the assessment, with the audit, you ha it's all documented what else needs to happen to that house. And then just, you know, talk with the homeowner and say what they're, see what they're willing to do. They're the ones that have to live in that house and they know a lot of cases, they know what's wrong, you know, that there's a cold room or there's a problem. Um, but they do still want that, they want that kitchen remodeled too, right? Um, and, uh, but, you know, I just think just having better dialogue around it up front and, and again, having as much documentation to say, look, here are the things that are going on with it and, you know, these are, we can address these as we're remodeling the kitchen or whatever, so we're adding on that room. But, but, um, you know, another thing that I did want to get out of this, I did talk to Doug about it, and as far as just, you know, building science principles and practices, you know, you can you can find them online pretty easily, green building, um, and uh, to understand air infiltration and, you know, the thermal boundary, like I said, <coughs> the, that myth of fiberglass does everything, is it's got to go away. Um, but. I've had two houses within a matter of a couple months, three months that I went and got into, and they both had their bathrooms remodeled. The remodeler put the shower head on the exterior wall, and the pipes have frozen in both cases. Um, and there's just no reason for that to be happening. I mean, there just isn't any reason for that to be happening. But. Um, it's just lack of understanding building science when you're putting that bathroom together, what's going on with it. Um, and, um, and where that air is coming in to uh, affect the temperature of those pipes. Um, but it just, uh, you know, being aware of, if you're building a chase, because what happens on both of those, they had, they had built out a chase, a little bitty chase, um, <coughs> For the for the plumbing for the shower head off the exterior wall, right? So, you know they they keep thinking that there's there's fiberglass in the exterior wall, so we're good, and it, it it doesn't you know that's helping, but at the same time, you know that opening at the top of the of that wall is going to be communicating with the attic, and if you don't seal that off. Um, then that air is just going to come down the attic into that chase, and they, you know, they built that out from that wall, and it's just going to freeze those pipes under certain conditions. And there's just, um, you know, what was interesting is both of those. Um, the one remodeler, when the homeowner called them and said, "Hey, our pipes froze in the shower. You want to come back out and fix that or look at that?" and they said, "No, we do not." Um, and uh, they, they just said, here, here's an insulator, you know, you go talk to an insulator. The other one said, yeah, we want to try to help. And they came out and they ripped the siding off the house, they ripped the sheathing off the house, and they, 
again, they were trying to insulate that exterior wall. It isn't the exterior wall that's going on, it's the top of that wall that's going on. So the top plates and the top of the wall is really critical in, in securing that air travel that's going to go down that wall. So, How would you diagnose that with that infrared camera to see where the uh -huh. cold yep. is coming from? Yep. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, and that's where, um, you know, I have, this was, this is the, you want to hear a horror story, this is to me, this is like the biggest horror story I could ever tell. Um, it was a 60s ranch in Ann Arbor, um, one story, this simple home, not a simple home, but it was a big home, but it was a ranch. And the homeowner wanted to put a, a second story in the middle of the house. They wanted two bedrooms upstairs. Essentially over the bathroom and living room, they just went up, right? And which should be pretty straightforward, I guess. But if you don't understand building science principles, if you don't apply those to those homes, you get what this happened on this home. There was so much ice coming off this house in the winter, they felt threatened to actually go in and out of it because it was melting so much snow off the top of that, of that second floor. And, uh, and it just, uh, and so they went back to the, the builder and said, hey, look, you know, this, this is crazy. We can't have this much ice coming off. It's just dangerous. And he said, okay, well, I'll put on gutter heaters for you. For six thousand bucks, I'll put I'll electrify your gutters, and that will take care of your ice. And it does, it does take care of it, but that's not the way to take care of it, right? And so there's absolutely no reason why that house should <coughs> that remodel should have taken place the way it did. In the in the in the long it's a long story, but basically they, that box that they built up for the second floor, it's a it was a 60s ranch, right? So your roof line is really low, your pitch is really low, and they wanted to keep that pitch low for the upper that, to match the lower and whatever. Um, so there wasn't a lot of attic space, but what they did was they kept it a traditional attic without any attic ventilation, right? Because it had little dormers out the front, little, you know, it was, it was a complicated design because they were trying to match the original house, right? And so they should have just hot roofed it, and they should have just spray foamed the whole box and be done with it. And then you can then build it out however you want it inside. And, and not worry about trying to, you know, keep traditional <coughs> practices like attic ventilation and, and, a, and such a tricky roof, you know, setup. Um, and uh, it just was, to me, it's just, just atrocious. For what it costs to do that and then to end up with that bad of a product, right? And then on top of it, it was uncomfortable uh, upstairs too. That the, that new addition as well. So, um, but well, any other any other Thank questions? Uh, well, thanks for everybody for coming out on a snowy day, and thanks, Doug, for uh, for the presentation. Greatly appreciated. Next month on the twenty second. I will be talking about how to build an energy efficient frame that Doug is not going to have to come out and audit. And I'm sure that's okay because there's about approximately 130 million homes in the United States that are <laughs> that need your services. So, uh, but we'll be talking about uh, some advanced framing techniques. Uh, when I say advanced, not not just stud spacing and things like that, but broad envelope type stuff. And uh, so come on out for that. And uh, thanks everybody for showing up. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody. Um, and like I said, I'll give Pete the Inflation Reduction Act work, um, workbook yeah. that I have. Um, I have a PDF of <coughs> that, and I'll let every, get, he'll get that out to everybody. Um, and uh, I'm always available for deeper dive conversations about any of this stuff. If you want to have. Uh, because I've got a lot of stories. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Yep. What do you mean when you do energy efficient lodges? Uh, well, um, I build homes in a factory.